Hi folks, it's a year later. This is part 15 of a Triumph video. Let's take a look what I've got to do. See you in a minute. Right, well, as I say to you, it's been a year since I last worked on the Triumph. It's funny how time flies. I've had a lot on with other jobs, as you know. But um, it's a pretty nice November day at the moment. The last video was in October. That was uh, the last one I've done. But I have a problem with this. As you know, in the last video, we got it running absolutely lovely. But I thought something wasn't quite right. In other words, the hoses were pressurising. Now, I did mention on early on in the video series that I suspected a he head gasket problem. Now, I had it stripped down, as you know, and I just needed to undo the exhaust manifold and remove the head bolts to remove the head. The reason why I didn't do that was because that I started to take the cover shield off of the uh, exhaust manifold, and I noticed that for me to take that off, they was gonna break the bolts in them because they were so rusted in, and that would have meant removing the, uh, the manifold, drilling the manifold out, so I thought, I'm gonna leave it. Anyway, it's come back to bite me on the backside, so to speak, so, um, I done a head gasket check by putting a, uh, a gauge in the uh, cooling system with a special chemical fluid that senses exhaust gas in the uh, water system and sure enough it come up that it was head gasket problem. So I've got to take the head off now. I've got to remove all what I've actually put back on. Not shouldn't be too much of a problem. So I'm gonna put you on a time-lapse camera and you can just watch me do that. And let's get this head off today, hopefully. See you in a minute. Right, well as you can now see, I've got the um, rocker cover back off again. Now in the short time that we had it running, I'm sure you'll see that there's mayonnaise build up yet again in that very short time that we've had it done. So this was definitely the right thing to do. And as you can see, there's a bit of water in there as well where obviously water is getting in. So this job really did have to be done as you can see. So I'm just gonna carry on now and strip everything else out. And I know I'm going to have problem with, I don't know if you can see these three bolts down here. There's the one there, one the other side, and there's also one at the bottom there. Now, when I started to undo these, these started to round off, so I'll probably have to lose them anyway. I'm going to have to take the exhaust manifold off and obviously re-drill that out. So this, this was the reason why I didn't do it last time. And yes, it's come back to bite me in the backside. Anyway, I'm going to carry on now, so you carry on watching while I strip this down. Right, okay, then let's have a little update to see what I've done. I've actually removed the cam belt. I've put this on top dead center. So I've lined the bottom pulley up with the uh, top dead center marks and the timing marks from the camshaft are in the right position there so I know when they're going back on. And all I've done was, if you probably remember from my last video, I slackened the two adjuster nuts off and then I stuck a large, well, in actual fact, what I did I actually got these in there. Remember these tools we found from river fishing, um, from uh, our magnet fishing expedite? I was able to get that down there and just put enough pressure on the adjuster wheel to hold it in place and then nip the adjuster nuts back up. And that basically detensioned the, um, the cam belt and I was able just to lever it off like that. And the reason why I did that, if, if you remember rightly from the previous video, I had great difficulty in removing the uh, the camshaft nut there and it's a 17 mil nut but it had been hammered so much with the uh, impact wrench that uh, I didn't want to damage it anymore. So I've done it that way and that's actually got over the job so I'm quite happy with that. Right, well all I've got to do now is um, basically grind these heads off. I've tried to um, undo them with a, a, a socket. It doesn't want to know full stop so I'm gonna have to do that now. So you're gonna have to come back with me after that, I've got my little Dremel out, but I'm a bit restricted for space here. I'm hoping I'm not going to need to take the front off to come in that way again. Otherwise, I've got to take all the lights out and all that. Which means rolling the car back. And to roll the car back, I've got to pump the tyres up because the tyres are totally flat. And I haven't got a battery here for my little battery charger and I don't have a foot pump. So 
I'm going to leave it at that for the moment. And uh, when I've undone that, then we'll come back and we'll obviously try to get the head off. So I'll see you again in a minute. There we go. Oh yes, there we go. That's a little offending article, and that's the reason why I didn't do it last time, because I couldn't bear the hassle of having to grind off nuts, knowing that I'd also have to take the manifold off and drill them rivets out, or them bolts out. But I've got to do it this time, so happy days. It's off, let's move on. Right, I've got clear access now, so I'm just gonna give these nuts a bit of a, a squirt in there, just to, Give them a bit of lubrication, like that. Let that soak in, hopefully undo these. And then it's just the head bolts along the top there. And we should be able to pull the head off, hopefully. So um, I don't think I've missed anything, to be honest with you. But uh, once I get this head out of the way, I've got to undo the manifold from the actual exhaust pipe down here. Uh, so I can take the manifold off, because as you can see, the little stubs I'm left with now these are what I've actually got to get out tap out or I might uh, do a bit of a jiggery pokery there I might try and heat that up first of all and uh, maybe weld a nut on there yet I still I'm not too sure yet but that that will come later on anyway right let's try and get these undone now yeah, 12 mil get that on there one getting them cracked is the main thing Two, three. I'm not too bothered about these top ones. It's the ones in there I'm worried about. And I'll have to get the little extension on in there. Let's just hope we can get on them all right and they're not too corroded in. Let's get them on there, make sure they're on there properly. Yes, five. Come on, baby, don't give me hassle. Yes. Well, how about that? We've got them undone. Always a worry with bolts like this that you can't see properly and you can't get at, and they have a tendency to rust. So, I'm happy about that. And putting penetrating fluid on. I think really does help but as you saw the engine in the last video which was a year ago was running as lovely and as smooth as anything so it's just that I noticed that the hoses were pressurizing in other words when the engine was running the hoses were very sort of expanded and hard to push in and if you know anything about cars and you've seen that symptom before even though the car was running lovely you would know that that would mean that there's probably combustion gases entering the cooling system and the only way to prove that is to buy a special kit that you plug onto your cooling system either at the top of your radiator or your expansion bottle and run the engine and there's a special chemical in there that if it registers exhaust gases in the cooling system it changes colour and sure enough when I've done that test that's what happened so I couldn't leave it although I could have put it all back together and tried to blindfold people if I come to sell it saying look it runs lovely it wouldn't be the right job so this had to be done a little bit of a lever there we go yes happy days happy days 
so realistically that should come straight off and drop down if I can just pull it over the last I need a bigger lever hold on maybe the hammer handle can go in there and just lever that off there we go that's off now so yes I'm happy with that when the gaskets come off seven and there's one there as you can see and I can't get a socket on that so I've had to take out the two bolts there this then should lift up which it does and come off put that there for a minute and this is a some sort of gear which is being driven off of the camshaft um, not too sure what it's for anyway but it looks like as you can probably see there right so now hopefully I should be able to lift that gear out I'll just get a screwdriver underneath you can probably see it's on sort of a worm gear by the looks of it it sort of lifts up hopefully there we go bring that shaft out oh that goes right down into the engine look at that look into a little spline at the end there look let's put that to one side and now as you can see I've got full access now to that head bolt so I'm gonna undo them now and I'll see you again in a second yeah look here's a little sneaky one for you as well you've got to take the fuel pump out there's a little nut under there a little 14 mil cylinder head nut under there as well so I've just got to take the fuel pump out to get to it and there's two uh, 12 mil headed nuts that hold the fuel pump on it's a mechanical fuel pump this by the way so uh, there's a little arm that levers in there, there we go. Let's see. There, out comes the fuel pump. And there's the other head bolt down there, look. Now I'm of the opinion that under the distrib distributor this end, it's gonna be another one as well. So I'm gonna have to unbolt the distributor, pull it out, and I'm sure that's gonna show me another one underneath there. And there we go, I've just withdrawn the distributor. And there's the final head bolt there. So I'm just gonna finish undoing these and then we'll try and whip the head off. Right, so just to recap, the main head bolts along the head are all the same length until you get to the one that's down under the distributor, which was that one under there, which was the last one I took out. That is a shorter one. And then you've got a nut there instead of a bolt. You've got a nut there instead of a bolt and you've got a nut right down there under the fuel pump instead of a bolt. The rest of them studs, as you can see, are exactly the same length. So hopefully, I'm now at the stage where I can lift the head off. So let me put you on a tripod and then we'll try and get it off. At last, oh, the head is off. Right, let's get it out of the way. Well, as you can see, a lot of um, those waterways are well blocked up. Now, I'm trying to see if the head's gone in any place. The head gasket, it looks like it's well broke up between all the ways the waterways but between oil and water which is the combustion chamber it's probably looking a bit dodgy there yeah so uh 
I'm going to have to obviously remove all this, clean out all them waterways, and I might even have to flush out the engine again to get rid of more corrosion. I did put the uh, vinegar solution in, if you remember rightly, but now that I've actually got this off, it's uh, it's looking like I could probably do the block again and fill it up with some sort of solution, a stronger solution to uh, really clean it all out of the way. But this head gasket, as you can see, is in a terrible state. Let's get it all off there, look. Look, absolutely terrible. Yeah, and I'd suggest it's probably around number one pot here that was causing the issue. There's a lot of oil and water mixed together in there. Yeah, I mean, it's a terrible state, look, so this really needed doing. Right, okay then. So I'm gonna leave it here for now. Uh, I'm losing a little bit of light now. We've had a few little problems along the way, but nothing we couldn't get over, so uh, anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again in the next video. And until then, bye for now.